for more than a year, we've been pushing for answers about dangerous dogs in San Antonio and what city leaders are doing to fix that issue. The I team's Jordan Elder has been relentless in this coverage. Several of those investigations leading to changes at the city level. And tonight she joins us with the new measures that leaders are calling for to keep you safe and hold dog owners accountable. And then my grandkids, no, they get home before me. The emotions are still high for Max De Los Santos. He's adjusting to a new life after being attacked by dogs last year. More than a dozen surgeries, months in the hospital, but now he and his family are advocating for change. If we can help our community and avoid this and reduce this and prevent it, even if it's just one life that we save, then I'm all for it. Councilwoman Marina Alderete Gavido felt the same way, filing this request for three big changes to how loose and dangerous dogs are handled. Right now, fines are handled on a sliding scale if your dog gets loose. This proposal would raise those fines. It would also allow people to use a pseudonym to file aggressive or dangerous dog affidavits, which could prevent retaliation. These affidavits are the only way ACS can start an investigation. It would also direct ACS to sterilize owned animals that get loose. For years, ACS has said that state law doesn't allow that. It's on their website even now. But the city attorney looked it over and said that's not how they interpreted the law, giving the go-ahead. This is something that we can push through. Raymond Nahara lost his father Ramon in a vicious attack last February. It's what sparked our dangerous dog investigation. There's been a lot of talk and things that need to be changed. It's, it's finally coming to head now. He says more needs to be done to protect you and Gavito says there's more to come. Let's think differently about this problem because we have to. ACS says they look forward to working with District 7 and the rest of the council to make improvements. From here, the proposal will go before council committees and then the full city council. Keep in mind, the city and the county sometimes work together on animal control issues, but the entities are separate. The city has an animal care services advisory board, but as of right now, Bear County doesn't have anything like that. Our Stephanie Esquivel is looking into some of the holdups the county is experiencing as they try to establish one. A spokesperson with the county tells me because the current Bear County animal care facility is in Kirby, the board created by Kirby Animal Services has also been used for the county facility. Now that Bear County Animal Care Services is building a new facility elsewhere, a separate Bear County Animal Care Advisory Board will be put in place to oversee operations at that new facility. Motion carries. Get it done. Thanks. On Tuesday, Bear County Judge Peter Sakai and commissioners approved moving forward to establish the Bear County Animal Care Advisory Board to help guide operations at the new animal care facility being built. That they make recommendations for improvement for any anything that comes up, and especially as we move into a new facility, we really want to create a best practice for how we're going to operate that facility. Currently, Bear County does not have an advisory board of its own. Since 2017, the Kirby Animal Services Advisory Board has been providing guidance to the Bear County facility. During the time when we were partnered, we actually utilized their board. We were part of their, you know, quarterly, you know, uh, quarterly advisory board meetings, things like that. So when we separated, and then of course time passed, and now we're under um, Dr. Guerrero, it's time that we need to make sure that we have our own, own advisory board for just the Bear County Animal Facility. Now that Bear County is building a new facility in an unincorporated part of the county, the separate advisory board will solely focus on making sure all animals are getting the best care possible at that facility. This will also ensure compliance with the state of Texas Health and Safety Code. Um, provides their expertise and their guidance, advocate for effective animal care policies, um, and obviously to support the compliance with, all, with Chapter 10. Stephanie Esquivel, News 4, San Antonio.